welcome to Dr. T. Matt. I hope that you enjoy the video. In this video, we'll study three examples. In the first two examples, the limit is shown to exist, and a review is given covering some limit rules and L'Hopital's rule, as well as the definition of pointwise continuity. Then, an example will be shown where the limit does not exist, and this will be demonstrated by the two-path test. Okay, for our first example, let's take a look at the multivariable limit as xy approaches the origin of e to the y sine of x over x. So, in this case, if you plug in 0 for y, you get e to the 0, which is 1, sine of 0 is 0, divide by 0, you say, oh, it's 0 over 0. But the limit of the product is the product of the limits, which is one of our limit rules. And so we can write this as the limit as x, y approaches 0, 0 of e to the y times the limit as x, y approaches 0, 0 of the sine of x over x. Now, this limit here, when y goes to 0, is e to the 0, which is 1, and this limit, sine of x over x, as x goes to 0, is a standard limit, which is known to be 1. So this becomes 1 times 1, which is 1. A couple remarks is that the limit of the product is the product of the limit, provided they both exist. This is a throwback to the limit as x approaches c of f of x times g of x is equal to the limit as x approaches c of f of x times the limit as x approaches c of g of x. And then typically we would say if this limit exists and equals l, and this limit exists and equals m, then the limit of the product is the product of the limits, provided they both exist. The second remark is that this is a standard limit. The limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x over x, which actually is 0 over 0, can be simplified using L'Hopital's rule as the limit as x approaches 0, the derivative of the numerator is cosine, and the derivative of the denominator is 1. And so this becomes the cosine of 0, which is equal to 1. This L'Hopital's rule allows us here to find that answer. So here is another example where we take the limit as xy approaches 2, 0 of the square root of 2x minus y minus 2 divided by 2x minus y minus 4. And we require that 2x minus y minus 4 does not equal 0 in order for this quotient to be defined. And so we say also that 2x minus y is not allowed to equal to 4. This condition will typically be added under the limit, saying we admit all paths to the limit solution except for this path where the denominator is not defined. So now we want to study this limit problem taking all paths approaching 2, 0 for this quotient. How does one solve a problem like this? Well, first one should inspect this for a factorization. Indeed, a factorization is possible in the numerator. We can write this as the limit as xy approaches 2, 0 subject to the constraint 2x minus y is not equal to 4 of the square root of 2x minus y minus 2 over, and this can be written as the difference of squares. So what it looks like is a squared minus b squared equals a plus b times a minus b, and that will give us this. a squared is equal to 2x minus y, and b squared is equal to 4. Hence a is equal to the square root of 2x minus y, and b is equal to 2. So we'll write this as the square root of 2x minus y plus 2 times the square root of 2x minus y minus 2. Now, this term cancels this one. And so we can make the cancellation of this term with this one in order to reduce this limit problem to the limit as xy approaches to 0 uh, along all paths except for 2x minus y equals 4 of 1 divided by the square root of 2x minus y plus 2. Now, substituting in 2 and 0, we end up with 1 over the square root of 2 times 2 minus 0 plus 2, which is equal to 1 over 2 plus 2, which is 1 fourth. One important remark about the solution is that at the outset, the square root 2x minus y minus 2 
divided by 2x minus y minus 4 when evaluated at the point 2, 0 of interest is equal to, so here we're evaluating this at x, y equals 2, 0, the square root of 2 times 2 minus 0 minus 2 divided by 2 times 2 minus 0 minus 4, which is 2 minus 2 is 0 over 4 minus 4 is 0. So at the beginning, if you just substitute in the limit point, you get 0 over 0. It turns out that even though the function is not defined at the point, so in that sense we're interpreting f x y equals to this function is not defined at this point of interest. So we might say f x y is not continuous at 2 0 because f of 2 0 does not exist. In order for a function to be continuous at a point, it must be defined at that point. This function is not defined at 2 0. However, the limit is still evaluable at 2 0, and there's a removable singularity at that point. There is a subtle but important issue regarding the transition from this step to this step to this step. When we remove the singularity, we also remove the requirement that 2x minus y does not equal 4 from the original problem. 2x minus y not equal 4 makes this denominator never 0. However, in this case, after we have removed the singularity, we've changed the denominator. Now, this denominator is never 0. You can observe that because you have a square root function plus 2, this is never 0. Therefore, this is actually no longer a needed requirement when evaluating this limit. I would prefer if I had written my solution like this. After canceling the singularity, the limit is now the general limit as xy approaches to 0. This function is a continuous function and can be evaluated directly by substitution of 2, 0 into the problem. Algebraic factorization, canceling out the singularity symmetrically, shows us what the value of the limit is. This case is very similar to a case from single variable calculus where you have a removable singularity like this. Although the function is not continuous and not defined at this point, the limit value still exists at this point. This example is actually very similar to the example, the limit as x approaches 1, of x squared minus 1 over x minus 1. Notice that for this rational function, you get 0 over 0 at the point of interest. However, if you are asked to solve a limit problem like this, you would factor the difference of squares, make a cancellation of what we call the removable singularity, rewrite the problem as the limit as x approaches 1 of x plus 1, and now evaluate this continuous function to get 1 plus 1 is 2. So what's happening geometrically in this case? Well, the idea is that this rational function, x squared minus 1 over x minus 1, is almost the same function as x plus 1, which has y-intercept 1, x-intercept minus 1, and, most importantly, at 1, a removable singularity at the point 1, 2. This function that I've drawn here is f of x equals to x squared minus 1 over x minus 1. However, this function is equivalent to this function almost everywhere. The only place where this function and this function are different is at the point x equals 1. We observe from this calculation that the limit exists as x approaches 1. However, we say that the function is discontinuous at the point 1. f of x is pointwise not continuous at x equals 1. f of x is, however, continuous for every value of x besides 1. We say that f of x is not continuous at x equals 1 because in order to be continuous, f of x must satisfy three conditions, namely that f of 1 exists to the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x exists, and three, that the two are equal to each other, namely that the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x 
is equal to f of 1, all three conditions must be satisfied for pointwise continuity at x equals 1, and while the limit exists, and in fact is equal to 2, the function value fails to exist, and therefore the limit cannot be equal to the function value since this does not exist. And so by failing this one condition, the function fails to be continuous at this point. However, the function is continuous every, on every other point and has domain of continuity, the set of all x in R, such that x does not equal 1, or we might write this as equal to, in interval notation, negative, one, negative infinity to 1, union 1 to infinity. Graphically speaking, this domain would be all points on the real line, excluding the value at 1. In this final example, let's study a case where the limit does not exist. In this case, the limit as xy approaches the point 1, 1 of xy squared minus 1 divided by y minus 1. In order to show the limit does not exist, we need to find two paths and show that we get different answers approaching the point 1, 1 along those two different paths. Which paths should we choose? Well, in order to begin choosing paths, it helps to understand the geometry of the point that we're approaching. We need to choose paths in the xy plane that approach this point at 1, 1. So, for example, we might choose the path, say, y equals 1, but the function is already not defined here, and so we must satisfy that constraint at the outset. So y not equal to 1 is a constraint of paths that we would be allowed to choose in this case. We could choose then maybe x equals 1. That seems like a nice choice, since in that case, this term seems to simplify nicely with this term. Let's give that a try. Choosing path 1 to be x equals 1, we would write our limit problem as xy approaches 1, 1 along p1 defined by x equals 1 of xy squared minus 1 over y minus 1. Then, by substitution of the path into the multivariable function, the multivariable function reduces to actually now a single variable function that looks like y squared minus 1 over y minus 1. Now, with no dependence on x as we approach this limit point along this path, we can actually rewrite this limit as a single variable limit. Furthermore, y squared minus 1, another difference of squares, can be rewritten as y plus 1, y minus 1. So, two changes are in order. Reducing this limit to a single variable limit as y approaches 1, which is to say y is approaching 1 along the line of path 1 defined by x equals 1, and then y squared minus 1 is y plus 1, y minus 1 divided by y minus 1. Now, as before, the removable singularity cancels symmetrically from the numerator and denominator. This is getting rid of the 0 over 0 that we would have here. In this case, this becomes the limit as y approaches 1 of y plus 1, which is 1 plus 1 equals 2. Now, can we find another path? Well, there are some natural choices and perhaps some unnatural choices. In my opinion, a path to look at would be a line through the origin like this. For example, y equals x. However, I think that maybe other lines that go through this point would also be reasonable first choices to choose. If you wanted to find a line that maybe goes through negative 1 and the point 1, 1, I think that would be a reasonable choice. Another choice that might be good would be a parabola that goes through this point. That would not be too difficult to define. Or a parabola that goes through the origin and this point and maybe to 0. I think I'll try y equals x first. And if that works, we'll be done. If it doesn't work, then I may try a parabola, maybe facing downward next, or facing upward, or a different line. If those all fail, and I know the limit doesn't exist, then I'll have to be more clever with the choice of path, maybe going on to a cubic function or something like that. But I don't think it will be necessary. Another choice that might be possible in this case would be a square root function, and I think that could be a good, good one to try as well in this case. The simplest thing, though, would be to choose y equals x for our second path. So let's see if that works. Here, this then becomes the limit as xy approaches 1, 1 along p2 defined by y equals x of x y squared minus 1 over y minus 1. If we substitute in for y, then we have the limit as xy approaches 1, 1 of 
y cubed minus 1 over y minus 1. Notice that if we substitute in for x, we get the same answer, namely x cubed minus 1 over x minus 1. Now, can we simplify this? Yes, but it's probably not part of most students' standard repertoire of information. In this case, you should note that y cubed minus 1 is a difference of cubes, which from pre-calculus you might recall, although I, I hazard a guess that most people wouldn't, y minus 1 times y squared plus y plus 1. So in this case, we can rewrite this as the limit, as y goes to 0, of y minus 1 times y squared plus y plus 1 divided by y minus 1. Then the y minus 1 terms cancel, and we're left with the limit as y goes to 0 of y, excuse me, this is a mistake. This is the limit as y goes to 1, and this is the limit as y goes to 1. So we should correct that mistake. The limit as y goes to 1, and the limit as y goes to 1. So the idea is, as y approaches 1 along this path, we are going to the point 1, 1 along the path of y equals to x. The limit as y approaches 1 of y squared plus y plus 1 is equal to 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3. We can conclude because 1 is equal to the limit as xy approaches 1, 1 along the path 1 defined by x equals 1 of xy squared minus 1 over y minus 1, and this does not equal the limit as xy approaches 1, 1 of xy squared minus 1 over y minus 1 along the path 2 defined by x equals y, since this is equal to 3, that we have found two different paths, and we get two different answers along those two different paths for the value of the limit. Therefore, the limit does not exist. What is the idea of the geometry in this case? Well, we have two different paths. Along path 1, we approach the point 1, 1 along the line x equals 1. Along path 2, we approach the point 1, 1 along the path y equals x. There is a surface in z, or fxy, space, a third dimension, coming out of the page. Approaching on this path gives one answer, and approaching on this path gives a different answer. Hence, the limit does not exist. Here is a computer-generated plot of this surface that we are studying. xy squared minus 1 divided by y minus 1. There is a singularity along the line y equals 1. If one approaches the point 1, 1 along the line x equals 1, then along the surface the function approaches z is equal to 2. However, taking a different path, like y equals x, actually approaches along a different curve. And along this curve, one can actually get a slightly different answer at this point, namely that z will approach 3, which is a surprising and interesting result.